how's everyone doing today? This is Rich here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, Andre Tessier, the CEO of Delta Resources. How are you doing today, Andre? We're doing very well. Thanks, Rich. And yourself? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Congratulations on some of the success on Delta Resources. The stock's been doing well. Prices of gold are going up. Minerals and mining company stocks typically right now are going up. So congratulations on your success. Well, thank you. We're very optimistic. Absolutely. And I'm very excited about your company. You guys have like almost no debt. You guys have a tight share structure. You guys are in the right sector right now. How long have you been in this business with Delta Resources? How long has the company been around? Well, the company uh, took over from another company called the Golden Hope Mines that had been inactive uh, since about 2012. Um, they, uh, they had just done a, a rollback, so we had nice light share structure. Uh, we brought in uh, new management. We brought in uh, uh, new board members. And, uh, and from then, it was, uh, it was time to uh, acquire some, some really good properties. And, and we were extremely lucky in finding two real gems. And what exactly does Delta Resources do? We're a mineral exploration company. And uh, so we've acquired some you know, fairly grassroots uh, properties with very high potential uh, for, you know, that, that we've acquired based on, on very uh, strict criteria, and, um, and, uh, and we're exploring them right now. Very good. How large is the property package in Quebec? Oh my God. Uh, the land package in Quebec is huge. It's about 156 square kilometers right now. And in fact, it's probably one of the largest one in the Shibugamo camp right now. Uh, we, I should say too, that we, we started with about 126 square kilometers and, and since then have added uh, another 30 uh, square kilometers to the package because we're getting encouragements in the area. So, uh, so it was, uh, yeah, we, uh, we're, we've, we've, consolidated everything and, and it looks really good. Why is the Shibugamo, Quebec, an important area for exploration? Well, Shibugamo is, well, first of all, it's, a, it's an old mining camp. So there's been a lot of mining in the area. There's, there's you know, a lot of people who know mining. Uh, Quebec is a very friendly uh, jurisdiction, as you know. Um, but more than that, uh, Shibugamo is, is going through a bit of a renaissance right now. Uh, we've got companies like Troilus Gold uh, that, you know, they're dealing with a five and a half million ounce deposit just north of Shibugamo. Wow. Uh, we've got a company like I Am Gold uh, with their Monster Lake project. Uh, Monster Lake is nearly half a million ounces of very high grade gold. Uh, then they've got the Nelligan project as well, uh, I Am Gold. They, um, which is a 3.2 million ounce deposit. And, um, and we've got the uh, Genesis, uh, Genesis Exploration, which is right next door to us. Um, and they're working on their Chevrolet uh, gold deposit, uh, which right now sits at about 680,000 ounces of gold. Um, just recently too, uh, Dory Copper uh, acquired the Joe Mann mine, located about 15 kilometers south of us. Um, and uh, that's an old producer that produced way over a, a million ounces of gold. So there's a lot of activity in the area. And I should say that, um, except for Troilus, all of these deposits occur around a, a pluton, uh, the, the La Dauversière and the Verneuil pluton. Uh, and, and we own the large package just north of that pluton. So it's, it's, uh, it's good, uh, good ground. Absolutely. Surrounded by some serious players. I like that with huge, huge, huge ounces. Um, how far does each dollar spent in Quebec for exploration go compared to other jurisdictions around the world? Uh, well, Rich, the Quebec is, is well known for its, its mining friendly uh, policies. And, um, and in, you know, to give you an example for us, uh, we are considered by the Quebec government as being explorers in the mid-north um, area. And in our area, for every, uh, every dollar that we spend, we get 28% back in, uh, in incentives. Wow. Um, so what that means is if you include the taxes, um, that's, that's 41% uh, that's coming back to us. So when you spend a million dollars and you get $410,000 back. So this is a huge wow. incentive. Wow, that's a huge incentive. That's incredible. I didn't know that. Yeah. No, and if you go even further north, the incentives are even greater. But of course, it's more, more expensive to explore. Wow. Okay, that's great. Now, you recently announced 
the sale of one of your properties for 1.7 million in cash. I love this deal. And you received your first 100K. I did a video on that explaining the news, which I think is great. Um, with the other payments scheduled over the next 15 months, why is this significant for your exploration project? And based on the Quebec tax structure for exploration, how much is this really worth to you in terms of potential dollars? Uh, well, again, yeah, the, the Quebec jurisdiction is, is a really great one to explore. Um, and you are correct. Uh, we've received our first $100,000 uh, payment. Uh, 250000 will be owed in October. And then from then on uh, until uh, September of 2021, we'll get $1.7 million. If we were to spend uh, all of that on our exploration property in, at Delta II, um, the $1.7 million if we can do the math, uh, turns out to be about $2.4 million. Um, and of course, that's non-dilutive. So it's, it's huge for, uh, for us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. What makes the Delta II project so exciting? <laughs> Where do I start? Um, it's a great land position, uh, like we stated earlier. It's a great land position, uh, very active exploration around uh, old mines, like the old Lim One mine that's just adjacent to our property, the Joe Mann past producer over a million ounce that's just south of our property. Joe Mann was interesting because it's, it's uh, you know, 1.1 million ounces of 8.8 of, uh, grams per ton gold but also mixed in with, uh, with silver and, uh, and copper. Um, so it's the type of target that we're looking for at, uh, at Delta II. Um, the other exciting thing at Delta II is that, you know, with all this activity and with these old deposits surrounding us, um, there's, there's actually uh, two types of deposit that we're exploring for. We're exploring for VMS polymetallic deposits and gold-rich uh, magmatic hydrothermal deposits. Um, so that makes the that makes the property pretty exciting. How is it that you have those two distinct types of targets on the same property, gold and VMS, gold, silver, cop and uh, copper and zinc? How is it that you're able to do that? Well, they're, they're, these deposits form in two different environments, right? The the VMS or volcanogenic massive sulfide polymetallic deposits, they form uh, at mid-ocean ridges, so at the base of the ocean. Of course, there's no more ocean in the Shibugamo area, uh, <laughs> but the rock record is telling us that. And the the Lemuen deposit is one of those deposits. Lemuen was was a bit less than about three hundred quarter, sorry, three quarter million uh, ton deposit. Uh, a very high grade material. Um, so uh, in addition to this, these deposits usually form uh, on a particular stratigraphic horizon. And right now, Delta has about 17 kilometers of strike length of that favorable horizon. So that's one environment. Now, the other type of environment that we're looking at um, is, is the magmatic hydrothermal goal deposit. Those deposits form, they associate, they're associated with plutonic activity. In our case, it's the La Dauversière pluton, that's that, that, you know, for which we have the contact. Um, and they're basically, when these, these plutons are in place, uh, they shoot out these dikes and, you know, into these structures, and they also shoot out this mineralization. So, so you know, there are two very distinct types of deposits, and in, in our particular case, we have both types uh, on the property. And R14, for example, is, is a, a good gold prospect that is of that magmatic hydrothermal type. Fantastic. Now, how close were you to the past producing and super rich Lemoyne mine? What were the average grades? Oh geez, um, Lemoine was a was a, a real jewelry box. In fact, it, it, I think to this day it's probably one of the richest uh, deposit uh, in Canada. Wow! Um, it was it was relatively small, with about three uh, three quarter million tons, seven hundred fifty thousand tons of, of mineralization. But it graded nine point four percent zinc, four point two percent copper, four point five grams per ton gold, and about ninety. Uh, grams per ton silver. So, like I said, it was a real little jewelry box. It's um, it's located about uh, 1.8 kilometers north of our property, um, but again, a stratigraphic horizon on which uh, Lemoine is sitting extends to our property for over 17 kilometers of strike length. Wow, is it true that the VMS type deposits like the Lemoine mine 
always happen in clusters? And what is the likelihood that you can find others like it? I see you've done your homework. Uh, they, it is true. Uh, the great majority of VMS, volcanogenic massive sulfide deposits, because of the way they form, they typically form in clusters. Um, and the, you know, there's examples of that everywhere. In Canada, for example, there's the Miranda District. There's the Metogamy District, both of them in Quebec. In New Brunswick, you've got the Bathurst District. In Manitoba, you've got Flin Flon and Snow Lake districts. Uh, all of these, um, they're, and, and that's why they call them camps. They're mining camps because there's more than one of these deposits. So when you get a, a deposit like Lemoine, which is sort of a lone deposit uh, sitting there by itself, it's pretty suspect. Now, not only, um, you know, the, we can add to this the fact that that the classical distribution of size of these deposits in each individual camp is such that you typically have a giant ore deposit, like, um, you know, they're, they're typically over 60 million tons of mineralization. Uh, the Horn Mine and the Flin Flon Mine in Canada are two good examples of that. But then you get a great number of, of um, intermediate size deposits, you know, varying between five and 25 million tons of mineralization. And then you usually get a number of these smaller deposits, you know, in the million ton range. Um, now, if we take that into account, uh, we, can, we can see that Lemoine is laying at the, the bottom end of that spectrum, uh, which, you know, would suggest that the larger deposits are yet to be found. Um, so that's what we're looking for and that's what we're targeting. That'd be huge. That sounds so exciting. Yeah. Now, I understand that you are completing phase two of your exploration campaign. When will you have results to show the market based on this work? And are you excited about the potential results? Oh, we're always excited about potential results. Uh, when you get results, geochemical results, most geologists will tell you it's like Christmas morning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but we uh, we expect those results. We we've we're not completely uh, done with our mechanical trenching so far. Um, we are done at the snowfall gold occurrence, uh, where you know past exploration yielded you know, up to 11 grams per ton gold. Um, so we we've, we've done the mechanical trenching there. Um, we've uh, done our channel sampling, and those results uh, should be in uh, within a month. Um, that's what the lab promises anyway. Uh, the rest of the assays, because we're still trenching on, on some of these targets and, um, and results will just flow as, as, we, uh, as we receive them. Very good. And when will you be drill ready and how many targets do you anticipate drilling? Uh, we uh, technically we are drill ready because some of these targets, uh, you know, we've tried to go take a look at, and uh, and in some cases the overburden is just too deep, so they they basically become drill targets. Um, that said, we're in the process of prioritizing these drill targets, and and once we have a priority list, we'll start drilling them. But I would assume that we should be ready uh, by September to start drilling some of these targets. Um, wow, you know. All, you know, if drills are avail available at the time. Uh, this drill program should extend all the way to the winter 2021 because uh, a lot of these targets uh, need to be drilled in winter. Um, so we, what I'd like to do uh, to start uh, is an, at least drill a minimum of 10 targets from our, from our uh, volcanogenic massive sulfide targets. Uh, we have right now a bit over 30. Um, and then we also want to test our, our gold targets uh, in the southern part of the, of the property. So I'd say we're probably looking to start at about a 5,000 meter drill program. Wow. And what are the chances that you find multiple deposits on the same property? <laughs> um, I don't know that you can put any number on that. Um, uh, that said, like we discussed, these, these VMS deposits uh, typically occur in clusters, and, and we've got the lone wolf there up there with, uh, with the Lemoine deposit. Um, should we be lucky enough to, uh, to you know, get a, or find a new um, VMS deposit, uh, considering the fact that they're typically in clusters, then I would say our chances are pretty high that we will be finding a, a new one after that. Um, you know, the old saying is, uh, no better place to look for a mine than next to another mine. Yeah, 
that's the name of the game, right? Yeah. So what everyone talks about, like my mind is right beside this mine and that mine, and they pulled up five million <laughs> ounces and they pulled out a million ounces. They pulled. I get it. I understand it. It makes so much sense, right? Yeah. Um, for us and here in our community, it's all about share structure. Like we really like t- tight floats, tight share structures because those are the ones that explode, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's quite a few stocks that we've seen over the last couple of years, especially miners that have just gone bonkers. I'm not going to use today to explain them all or to bring them up. Um, but I think we know some of them and, and, um, and I think I'm sure, you know, lots of them that have done extremely well. And, and I believe this is an early stage opportunity similar to that. It has a lot of upside that can really explode. Can you explain for myself and all of our, uh, community, what your share structure is, um, how much is being held by insiders and what kind of skin in the game you might have as far as like how many shares you're holding and, you know, maybe like some, maybe institutional investors, how much maybe they're holding and what's out there on the float and how much is available for people to buy in the open market? Uh, Well, we've got a fairly tight uh, share structure right now. We've got 29 million shares outstanding and uh, fully diluted. We're at about 38 uh, million. Um, a lot of these are warrants uh, that vary in, uh, in price between uh, 20 cents and 30 cents. Uh, we still have a few uh, scragglers at 12 cents, and those will expire at the end of uh, 2021. Um, in terms of, uh, of opportunity or, or skin in the game, I personally own 149,000 shares, um, and, uh, and I, I intend to continue investing in, in the company. Um, right now, my investment is mostly in time. Um, that said, we, uh, we truly believe in the stock. Um, our uh, management in general owns about 4% of the stock, I would say. Um, and in, in terms of institution, uh, we have uh, CDEX, a Quebec institution uh, that, uh, that uh, went into the last financing at 20 cents uh, with an investment of $200,000. So... Um, there's there's a lot of float there, uh, and it, uh, like we said uh, earlier, we uh, we are um, a company that took over an older company called Golden Hope. Um, so you know, different investors like different companies. Um, occasionally, you'll have the the Golden Hope, the old Golden Hope uh, investor that that is looking to sell their shares. So there's there's always opportunities in the market. If there was one thing you'd want investors to know about the company and why they should possibly possibly invest, what would that be? I, I would say the, the biggest thing I would want investors to, re, to remember is that our priority at Delta is to bring shareholder value. Um, we're not here to you know, promote, overly promote and, and pump the stock. We, we truly want to discover deposits. Our management team with Michelle Chapdelaine uh, as VP of Exploration, uh, myself, uh, Frank Candido have a good history of bringing shareholder value and discovering, making significant uh, discoveries in the field. Uh, our intent is to do the same thing with Delta. Uh, we are looking for a mine. Very good. And what is the best way for someone to get in contact with the company if they were interested in investing? Well, there's a couple of ways. Um, I can always be reached directly. Uh, at a tessier at delta resources.ca. Uh, and Frank Candido, our chairman, uh, is also available at uh, f candido at delta resources.ca. Uh, I'd invite investors to take a peek at our website, uh, which is delta resources.ca. Fantastic. Well, I wish you all the best of luck on your future endeavors. Myself and our community will be watching very, very closely. And I wish you all the best of luck moving forward. Thanks very much, Rich. Thanks for this. Thank you for your time today. Andre Tessier, the CEO and president of Delta Resources. Have a nice day, everybody.